you're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Join your hosts, Steph and Kara, every Wednesday morning as they dive into a new witchy topic. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. This is Steph. And this is Tara. And you're listening to episode 11, Advanced Books and Books for Different Types of Witches. (laughs) Yay! I love books. (laughs) So we talked last week all about books for beginners. We had like a 20-minute episode (laughs) on book recommendations for you. And we are back again because we have even more recommendations. And that's why we had to split it up because otherwise you'd be listening to us in one week for an hour just talking about book recommendations so I mean this next sleep but we could totally do it <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we'd split it up and make it a little easier to listen to so we are going to like last week go over Tara's and then I will jump in with mine so let's just get started because got a list to get through <laughs> Tara yes. take it away so I'm going to start with kind of intermediate books. These books go a little more in depth into very specific topics, but they don't, um, they're not for a particular path so much as they're just kind of deep divey into specific items. So I actually had to ask Steph how to pronounce this. So hopefully she led me not astray, (laughs) but Llewellyn's uh, Sabbath Essentials book series. It's by various authors. There's one book per Sabbath. These books are really, really nice if you want to know more about the Sabbaths. They have some information. Each one has similar information at the very beginning about the Wheel of the Year. And then it kind of does a deep dive into the specific holiday. It talks about the old traditions behind each of the holidays. Then it goes, there's a section on new traditions and how people celebrate in modern era. It goes through a section on recipes, which we all know I love, and it has very specific recipes for each holiday. They don't just say, oh, this makes some bread. No, it has how you can do it, how you can decorate it, um, what you need to do, how long it needs to bake, like in a full recipe. Then it also has suggestions on how to celebrate. Similar to, uh, we talked real briefly in our Sabbath episodes about how... You can celebrate, and there's so many different ways you can. This has a complete section on what you can do for the specific holiday. So it's not super general information. It's very specific, but I like these so much. I haven't read all of them. I've read three of them so far. Um, My goal for this year is to read each of them. (laughs) They are by various authors. So if you really like one and then you don't like another one quite as much, they are, they all have different voices. They're not all the same. So do keep that in mind when you're reading them. If you love one and you're like, oh, this was so easy to read. This was great. The next one's not going to be the same. That was the hardest part for me when I was reading them was just like, oh, I love this voice. I love the writing style. This is such good information. They're all organized the same. So they all have really good information, but just because they're different authors, some of the writing styles are different. And if you're like me and you want to read them one after the other after the other, it can kind of throw you off a little (laughs) bit. Uh, Next up is, again, a series of books by various authors. It's called The Witch's Tool Series. And we have talked about um, why you don't need any tools when you're first getting started. But this goes into really specific information about specific tools. So if you're interested in learning more about whether you want a wand, whether you want to use a book of shadow, whether a cauldron's for you, a broom, an athame, an altar, they have books for each of them. Again, it can be, if you go right through the series and you read them all and you're like, yes, this is great. Kudos to you. I have not read them all. I've read the ones I'm interested in but there's so much knowledge and they're all really great and they do fit together. Uh, They are numbered. The numbers don't mean anything. You don't have to read them in any order. Like I said, I've only read the ones that I'm interested in and only about the tools that I'm interested in using and incorporating my, uh, my practice, but it's such a good resource because they go into such detail about the specific tools, how you can use it, how you can make it, how you can uh, integrate it. 
And so I highly recommend this as you're finding your path. It's not as broad based as the beginner books, which is why I put it in intermediate, but it's not quite as far in as the advanced books, which I'll get to soon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a broom book, a wand book, an athame, a mirror book, which is actually very fascinating. I don't even use mirrors in my practice, but I did read that one just because I was interested. <laughs> uh, book of Shadows, Cauldron, and Altar are all part of that series. And again, they're by a variety of authors. So I didn't list the authors here, um, but you can totally look up whichever book you're interested in and it'll tell you what authors um, helped in creating that particular novel. Well, it's not a novel, but... Okay. So those are my intermediate suggestions. And now I'm going to get into the advanced section. <laughs> I say these are advanced only because I don't recommend these for the beginner witch. I recommend these for people that are more comfortable in the path that they are currently walking or going towards. And definitely when I make these recommendations, we've already talked about what kind of witch I am, but you're going to get like a duh based on these recommendations. <laughs> So my first one is another book by Scott Cunningham. I loved his um, solitary guide so much that I went out and I bought and read all of his other ones. He has some very specific titles out there. The only one I ended up keeping, however, is his Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. Um, if you do any herb craft or kitchen witchery, um, cottage witchery, hedge witchery, this book is phenomenal. It's very, very useful. It has both um, traditional medicinal and cooking and magical uses for different herbs. And it's laid out literally like an encyclopedia. So you see or you know what your herb is. You can go to the back and just find it, look at it. And then it has such in-depth knowledge. I really, really like it. I kept it for years and years. If you're not into magical herbs. He also has uh, a book on crystal gems and metals, which is has the same kind of encyclopedia in-depth knowledge. I don't really use crystals, gems, or metals, so I no longer have this book. But it, again, it is a good resource if that's something you're interested in. And then there's also, he has an incense, oils, and brews version. I like this one, but I just check it out when I need it from my local library because I don't feel the need to keep it. I just don't do enough work out of it to want to keep it in my house. And I'm not a minimalist like stuff. I just, I think three books of witchcraft books is enough. <laughs> three shelves <laughs> is more than enough. Um, then next up is The Hearth Witches, and I'm totally going to mispronounce this. Steph, you want to help me? Compendium. There you go. Uh, Magical and Natural Living for Every Day. Uh, it's by Anna Franklin. I thought this book was phenomenal. It's not a super easy read, but it flows so nicely, and she has a lot of knowledge in here. And the first part is a lot of general knowledge about the hearth craft and how you can incorporate it day to day and what is included. And then the second part uh, maybe the second two-thirds of the book is actually a lot more detailed knowledge. Not quite an encyclopedia, but she gives you a lot of references, uh, ways to incorporate. And then she gives you a lot of ideas on not only incorporating into your life, but how to get more in-depth knowledge, uh, either locally or other books. Or she has a lot of recommendations in there as well. Um, this one I actually just finished, and I... Liked it so much I went out and bought it. <laughs> the Hearth Witch's Kitchen Herbal, Culinary Herbs for Magic, Beauty, and Health by Anna Franklin. I love this. This goes through everything that people generally keep in their kitchen cabinets anyway, and how you can use it in magic, how you can use it for beauty, how you can use it in just to cook healthy meals for your family. I loved it. I am not going to lie. Some of the things in here I did not have in my kitchen, and I went out and bought because <laughs> apparently there are way more uses than I thought there were for them. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, I use a lot of herbs and uh, hearthcraft in my practice because <laughs> these are my main recommendations. <laughs> no, I mean, those uh, would have all been on, on my list too. But like Tara said last week, she made her list first and then I had to add to it. <laughs> so. I was all set. And uh, it was kind of funny because when I was looking for advanced books, 
I was like, oh, I can recommend this one or this one or this one. I was like, but these are the three that I have read in the last year. The Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs I've actually had for two decades, but the other two are newer. Um, and obviously I'm really liking her writing style since they're by the same author. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you at all um, want to t- test out your kitchen craft, I highly recommend the Kitchen Herbal. It's really, really fascinating. And I almost guarantee if you do any cooking at home, you have like half those things already in your cupboard. And so it's just really interesting to read about how you can incorporate craft into using them in different ways. At least for me, because I'm a big old nerd. (laughs) Um, Another book that I'm going to recommend, I haven't finished it yet, but Cottage Witchery by Ellen Dugan. I'm really liking this book. It's a little different for me um, just because it's on a slightly different path, but it really resonates with some of my practice. And it's just interesting to see how other people incorporate specific things that I've never thought of or I'm never going to do, to be honest. But it's interesting to see how other people use things that I use every day, but in their own practice, it may have a completely different twist. Or in this one... um, I just think it's really interesting to read because it's not my practice exactly. And I probably won't keep it just because I won't need to reference it again and again. It might be one of my library books where I just check it out when I do want to reference a specific section, but not keep, but I am enjoying it. So. Okay. That's what I got for that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, let me jump into my list then. Um, Mine are, not necessarily advanced books, um, but they are very specific is kind of what I went with for my list. So the first one that I'm going to recommend is called Be Your Own Astrologer by Joanna Waters. And <laughs> you would. <laughs> my sister-in-law just got me this for Christmas as a fun, like, I know you love this stuff kind of gift. So I like went into it just thinking it would be like a cute little like coffee table book. It's like a square shaped it's blue kind of thick um and I thought it would just be more like you know just like something fun because it's sold at Urban Outfitters so I didn't like have (laughs) super high expectations um (laughs) but it's actually packed with a ton of information and obviously I know already like I love astrology and zodiac forever she's loved it forever (laughs) That it's actually packed with a ton of information that I can confirm through years of practice is correct. So I was really excited about it. it it um, has all of the astrology for the different signs, but it also um, is very like zodiac based, but it also talks about like the planets and it's not just like, oh, your, your sun sign, like my sun sign is Scorpio and here are these things, but it actually talks about like the different houses, your rising sign, your Venus, Mercury, like all of those things. So I think it's like completely fascinating. And I was like about to overwrite, overwrite this book completely, but I think it's great. <laughs> so <laughs> highly, highly recommend that one just stuck in. If you are interested in astrology and you, you know, want to get started on that, that's a good, good resource. Um, yeah. The next one on my list is Crystals, The Modern Guide to Crystal Healing by Yulia Van Doren. And I talked about this in the last um, episode about liking pretty books. And this is a complete Instagram aesthetic book. It is <laughs> it is gray and pale pink with rose gold <laughs> writing. It's like a complete Instagram coffee table book, but I'm not even sorry about it. Like, it's, okay, it's beautiful, first of all. And like, the it's each page once you open it is like a photo of the crystal it's like a beautiful photo and then like the page of like description of everything and it's it's big it's a thick book and it has tons of information on it so you go into it you know like the last one thinking that it's just like a coffee table book just gonna like contain the basics but it actually has a ton of information about crystals um, and it has so many different ones in there, not just like the basic, you know, top 20 that everybody talks about. It has the whole list and it's just, it's beautiful to look at, but uh, also spot on with the information that's contained in it. And I love crystals way more than Tara does. So this one, way, 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 way more. Yes. Yeah, so, so this one is, you know, up my alley. 
But yes, if you are interested in getting into crystals, learning about their different properties, learning about using them for healing, this is actually a great book for that. Cool. <laughs> the next two on my list, I'm grouping them together, um, they are both by Aaron, spelled with an A, Murphy Hiscock, and they are called The Green Witch and The House Witch. These have also made the round on Instagram um, because they're relatively recent releases, mm -hmm. but that does not mean that you should discount them. These are really good. Yeah, they're really good. They're very easy reads, and they're also ones that flow, like the story, you know, flows through it. So you could sit down and like read them to cover to cover rather than it being an encyclopedia. And um, the reason I didn't put them in with beginner books is because they are very specific. So the uh, the house witch one is my favorite, obviously, because Tara and I are both hearth witches. Um, yep. <laughs> so it, that one contained a bunch, ton of great information. But the green witch one is also very interesting because you incorporate a lot of green witchcraft in hearth witchcraft. Yeah. So a green very witch, yes, we talked about, you know, the... Uh, typical types of witches that you find in green, which is very common. It's all about uh, what you'd expect using nature and you can incorporate in uh, hearth witchcraft because you can have your own gardens, use that in your kitchen, use the herbs and things. So those two kind of cross over. So I really liked both of these books because there is a ton of information in there. Um, but each one goes specifically into that path and that type of witchcraft. So I really like that. Um, it's a good like resource to have and good things to know, uh, but I would I wouldn't start there because you don't want to no. you know get bogged down into one type of witchcraft when you're not really even sure which direction your practice is going to take. But once you practice more and you kind of know, like these are two great books to look at. And having said that you don't want to start there, don't be afraid to read a bunch of the in-depth stuff if it's interesting, even if you haven't defined your practice. If anything grabs your attention, explore it. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. The next one on my list is A Complete Guide to Fairies and Magical Beings by Cassandra Eason. And I love this one. <laughs> um, this is, if you've never... If you don't really know anything about the Fae um, and you want to learn more about fairy rituals, working with the Fae, including like their folklore and history, this is a really good one to start with because um, it's easy to read. It's not like an encyclopedia, um, but it, it still contains a ton of great information. It also, even if you're not interested in the Fae per se, if you're at all a history buff, it goes into a lot of the history behind how they originated and the stories and the myths. And it's really interesting to read, even if you're not into fae magic. The next one on my list is Hedge Witchcraft by Ray Beth. And this is definitely the best book to read if you're interested in um, hedge witchcraft. It is Wicca based, but the information is still solid. And a lot of hedge witchcraft is Wicca based today. Um, yes. If you remember from when we talked about typical types of witches that you find, hedge witchcraft is just that they walk the hedge between the physical world and the spiritual world. So they do a lot of spirit work. Um, and this book is really interesting because it's actually written in letter form. So it's like the author writing and receiving letters from people who are interested in learning about hedge witchcraft. So I just think it's super interesting the way that it's set up. Um, which makes it fun to read because you're just like reading these like letters between people. <laughs> I don't know. I really like that. And I do not, which is why I've not read this, even though the subject is very interesting to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really like the format of how it's set up, but um, yeah, it's, it's super interesting. It's got tons of good information, but yes, this would be the one to read if you want to know more about hedge witchcraft. The next one on my list is another one that I love, Stick Stones, Roots and Bones by Stephanie Rose Bird. So this is a super interesting look into the practice of hoodoo, including the history, folktales, spirits, energies. Hoodoo is not the same as voodoo. Hoodoo is um, American. It's the practice that originated um, with enslaved Africans in like low country South Carolina. Like this is totally going to date me because 
I feel like many people who are listening have never heard of this. Like they're they're too young to know what this is. But there used to be a TV show called Gullah Gullah Island. <laughs> yeah, and you brought that up. I am just going to throw that out there. But Gullah Gullah Island is hoodoo. That's <laughs> they didn't really practice hoodoo on this like children's television. But that's like where where it is from. But they they actually did kind of actually address hoodoo on that oh, on that show. But yes, best Gullah reference Gullah. we've made so far. Gullah Gullah Island. Let us know. <laughs> Let us know in the comments or leave us a voicemail if you ha- remember Gullah Gullah Island. I can't even imagine how old that show is, but. <laughs> Anyway, so voodoo is in the Caribbean islands and it's in Louisiana and voodoo is a closed religion. Yes. And hoodoo is not, although it traditionally came from that area and from enslaved Africans, that's, it's not a closed religion. It's a practice and it differs from voodoo in a couple of ways, but one main way is that hoodoo um, has a lot of Christian influences Yeah, voodoo does not. But I think the practice of hoodoo is really interesting. Um, This is a really good look at like the history and folktales of where it came from. And then also a look at kind of what you do in hoodoo practice, which is a lot of um, making dollies and doing a lot of um, spirit work, incense, um, creating charms and talismans and things like that. And I find that all very interesting. The next one on my list is Tarot by Hay House. This is my go-to tarot book for learning Mm -hmm. how to read tarot, what you're looking at in the cards. Um, It's like no nonsense. So there's no like pretty pictures or anything. It's just like dives right in. Um, It's based on the Rider Waite deck, but most decks today are based on the Rider Waite imagery. So you have a deck and I do have one. Um, a deck that is like completely on its own and not based on Rider Waite. So this book isn't helpful for that. But since most decks are based on that, this book is extremely helpful. If you've never read Tarot before and you really want to get into it, I'm learning um, just about the different cards. It'll go into specific the specific cards and numbers and suits and things like that. And it also goes into um, how they interact with each other and the different imagery that you find on each one to help you read because that's kind of what tarot is is looking at the big picture of like the cards in front of you how they interact together and what the different images mean um so one card is not going to have the same meaning across the board every time you pull it for every person that's not how it works so this is um such a good resource if you want to learn how to read tarot and I highly recommend that even if you decide tarot is not for you, because I'm not good at it, I'm not good at interpreting it, it's still really good knowledge to have, just kind of as a baseline on understanding a lot of things in other areas of the craft. So the next one on my list is kind of a fun one, The Power of Mercury by Leslie McGuirk. Um, and I added this to the list because all things Mercury retrograde are so popular when it happens. Like everybody (laughs) loves to blame things on Mercury retrograde. Oh yeah. But I I don't (laughs) think everybody completely understands what that means or just how powerful this particular planet is. Um, So this book covers so much information and not just about the retrogrades, but also about Mercury in general, how it interacts in like the various houses of your astrology. Um, so this is even more in depth than the Be Your Own Astrologer book that I mentioned. This is just about Mercury. But yes, if you like see that come up all the time about people blaming their forgetfulness and like everything else on Mercury retrograde, everything bad that happens yep. in their life is Mercury retrograde's fault. This is a great book for you to read to figure out why. Thanks talk about that. <laughs> so I've not read this book, but I should because I love sending Steph memes about how everything is wrong because Mercury is to blame. <laughs> I know. It's like people, my favorite meme. Yes. So people, people love to blame everything on Mercury Retro, right? So, oh, yeah. Which I them. don't blame them, but you should read this so, so you know why. <laughs> Maybe it'll be even funnier next time I send you a meme about it. <laughs> <laughs> and the very last one on my list kind of goes along with Stick Stones, Roots, and Bones. And this one is the Voodoo Hoodoo Spellbook by Denise Alvarado. Um, so this is more... 
as the title suggests, spell book, whereas the other one was, you know, more history and things. So I mentioned before that voodoo is a closed religion. So if you have not been initiated into it, you can't really know how to practice it. So you can't really make a voodoo doll and expect it to be correct. Like that's, that's just not going to work. But you can make dollies and poppets and sachets. And that's what they talk about in this hoodoo spell book, which I, there are a lot of aspects of hoodoo that I really like. It's like how to make your own like floor washing. Like that's, we'll get into house cleansing as hearth witches. We love house cleansing, but it's like how to make like an actual floor wash. That's a a hoodoo thing. Um, And it goes into a lot of like Appalachian magic and things like that. So I really like this one too. Um, This is more, I put it in not only as like a deep dive into hoodoo, but as a more advanced book because this is like spell work. Whereas, you know, when we talked about the beginner books, not a lot of them include spells in it or they include like very beginner spells. Um, This one, you really need to know what you're doing (laughs) before, before you dive into it. But if that's something that interests you and you've been practicing, then that is a great resource. As you can probably tell from our recommendations, foundation is important to us. <laughs> we love foundation. Yes. <laughs> so much so. That is everything that I have on my list. How about you, Tara? Well, I do have more that I could recommend, but not on the official list. And we've almost at 30 minutes. So I think oh, I'm going to wrap it up here. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Yes. If you have read anything on our list let us know on instagram or leave us a voicemail and if you have anything that you particularly want to recommend to other people please please let us know yes please leave us a voicemail because um we are able to play them on the next episode so you might hear yourself (laughs) yeah and i pretty sure that if you recommend something we will read it or at least i will because i love reading about witchcraft and everything else (laughs) yes So uh, let us know if you love or even if you hate anything that we recommended. What else you have to add to the conversation? We would love to hear. Always. We're always interested in your opinions. And that is all we have for you this week. We will see you next week for episode 12, which is all about Ostara. Yay! Bye! Bye! Thanks for listening to Witch Wednesdays with Steph and Tara. Love our content? Consider donating at anchor.fm slash witch dash Wednesdays to help keep our podcast up and running. Please leave us a voicemail on that same site if you have any questions or comments and follow us on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast.